What is going on guys? This is Trifecta J and this is episode 5 of my MLB franchise with the Chicago White Sox. We're starting off with a trade, Julio Tehran, Jose Peraza, and Dan Ugla for Alexi Ramirez and Scott Carroll. Also looking at my draft picks, we have Lauren Apracio, an A potential 18 year old starting pitcher, Hank Hooper, a 21 year old B potential catcher, Austin Hicks, C potential. C potential, 21-year-old relief pitcher, Jim Fisher, C potential second baseman, and Tyrell Nimeth, a 19-year-old D potential shortstop, and then the bottom two I just, I didn't end up signing, but the reason I signed Tyrell Nimeth, he's sort of a, he's not the highest potential, but he's only 19, so that works. So you can see Byron Buxton has actually been called up to the major leagues, so that is sort of big news in the, uh, everything. So you could also see we're doing one more trade, Evan Marzilli, Jose Martinez, and Matt Stites for Josh Fegley, Hector Noesi, and one more player, Adam Engel. So that, that was just a trade for a couple of prospects. The biggest one is Jose Martinez, as he's a B potential pitcher, really young, sort of similar to the Brewers pitcher we acquired earlier in the year. And also looking at our some stat updates. Matt Lindstrom having an incredible year. Started off with a great spring training and continued that with a 1.5 ERA. So we're taking on the Orioles. They are 52 and 25. A great year from them so far. They're actually in first place of the American East. And also you can see our standings. We're in fourth place. The Tigers are just having a horrible year. Not really sure what's going on there. But we're 34 and 45. And I want to talk about that trade a little. So we got Julio Tehran, uh, Jose Peraza, and Dan Ugla for Alexi Ramirez, basically. So Alexi, I feel like he can play second base for them. That's probably the biggest hole on the entire Braves roster. And they have a ton of starting pitching. I think they have like seven or eight possible starting pitchers that they could put out there. And then Peraza, he's a leadoff guy. He's probably He would have been the second baseman of the future for them. But the Braves are playing for right now and getting Alexi Ramirez. So, and then we're taking on the contract of Dan Ugla. It's not as bad as it is in real life, but that is something the Braves would love to ha be able to get out from under. And so, back to the game. We get a couple runners on in the first inning, but that is, there's nothing doing really there. So, we have some other things that have happened. As that ball is just crushed by Nelson Cruz. We designated Charlie Leesman uh, for assignment, released Christian Marrero, called Adrian Nito up, and those were pretty much the moves that followed. And then the second trade, we got Evan Marzilli and Jose Martinez. I got uh, Evan Marzilli, that's just a guy that I really like. He went to my favorite school, which is South Carolina, and played college baseball. Also teammates with Jackie Bradley Jr., so that's sort of a little storyline as they played in the outfield together in college. And almost able to pull the double play right there as Paul Canerco gets that, but not able to get to first base. And then we gave up a catcher. That's something that the Diamondbacks really seemed like they wanted. And then a couple of other players that weren't huge players as there's no one on this team at this point that I really am too big on that's on our major league roster except for like Chris Sale and Julio Tehran. Also like Jose Abreu. So th those are pretty much the three like on our roster at this moment that I feel like could be a part of this future. However, Jose Bray is a little older. I think he's like 29 right now. So that could be a little bit of an issue. But Jeff Kepinger with a single. Two outs right now. As our man is up. And that is one of the guys that we required in the Xander Bogarts trade. Uh, Herrera. And he strikes out swinging there. But Julio Tehran. A really nice performance from him so far. Has that strikeout pitch working. Only giving up one run. And that was a home run. So Adam Jones up. 2-2 count, and he strikes out, another strikeout, that's his second on the inning. Great performance by Julio Tehran in his first outing as the Chicago White Sox. So, one more, and he strikes out the side, a huge inning from Julio Tehran. I really love this guy, he has pitched great for the Braves, all-star for them this year in real life, and he's just, he's one of my favorite Braves players, they are my favorite team. I was un I really like Jose Peraza. I feel like he could be a really nice player for us in the future if he could go on like one of the stock is rising type streaks and get to a, like a higher B potential, maybe an A. I feel like he would be a great guy for us. But right there, men on first and second now 
after that ball goes right down the line, we won't even test uh, the arm of Nelson Cruz. But Jeff Kepinger up, he grounds that ball, and that will get the Orioles out of the inning. No damage done. Ugh, I Jeff Kepinger, he's really underperformed from what you would think he would do in this game, and really in real life too, with his contact ratings. And that was a very questionable call by the umpire right there, as Julio Tehran will walk Nelson Cruz. So, J.J. Hardy up. That ball is flown to Adam Eaton. He will be able to hell, hold Nelson Cruz at first base as that ball gets into Paul Canerco. A really nice throw. Adam Eaton's another guy that I like. I just don't know how much or how long he'll be on this team. If Because if he can get me something really good, I will not doubt to trade him. But 1-0 going into the fifth inning. Not a lot of hits. Only five total on this entire day. But Herrera gets his... A uh, hit right there, his first on the day, a really nice play from uh, Jonathan Herrera. So man on first, one-two count for Tyler Flowers, another guy that I really want to move. He has no contact, and it's really hard to hit with him. Just You can see based on his vision, he's a pretty much a homers or nothing guy, but he does get some contact right there and move the runner up. So man on first and second, no outs right now for uh, Alessandro Deaza, and he grounds into a double play, it appears. Yep, I think I said this last episode, but for a guy with his speed, he grounds into so many double plays. It's really frustrating to play with him. But Adam meeting up, and he just crushes that ball to second base, but the second baseman is right there, and he's able to throw him out to get the Orioles out of the inning. Still 1-0, no damage done once again as they were able to escape it. So 6-1, Jose Abreu just obliterates that ball into deep, uh, left center field and he will be able to get into second maybe the throw will be closed and he's able to get in there with a no out double a great hit from Jose Abreu so obviously El Garcia up now and he just pops that ball up uh, not not a great hit that ball was really high in the zone but I wanted to see, see what I could do I felt like I'm able to get some nice contact on that and drive that ball but I was not able to so Gordon Beckham up and he sort of loops that ball right into right field and that ball is able to get down and Jose Abreu will come in and score as the game is tied now at 1-1 one to one with a man on first base so the White Sox have something going 3-2 count for Jeff Kepinger and he hits that ball into left field so the uh, White Sox have a nice little thing going in this inning as men on first and second and that ball is caught by the first baseman I thought that might be able to get into right field and almost probably be able to score a couple of runs but Julio Tehran back out to pitch the bottom of the sixth. And that ball is just crushed. And that maybe that ball bounces off the wall and looks to be a double. As But that throw is in time and he gets him at second base. Oh, amazing throw by Abiseo Garcia to get Nick Marcakis at second base. 3-2 count. And Deaza gets that ball into right field as that is a single. Really nice play from Alejandro Deaza. Guy who's... Not not hitting that great, but not really not hitting that bad in this season. But that appears to be a double play if they can get him, and they will be able to get Adam Eaton in time. Another double play as we are not able to score. We do get a man on, but not able to convert him. So Jose Abreu up once more, and he hits that ball hard. Another hard hit ball into center field, and he will be able to get on to first base. Nice hit from Jose Abreu. 1-2 count. Obviously, El Garcia. Very similar play to earlier in the game as he just sort of, the ball was high and I tried to hit it, but instead it ended up just being a very high pop-up. Gordon back him up and he hits up on the right field and that ball will get down. Men on first and second now for the Chicago White Sox, top of the eighth inning. So now second and third, 2-2 two -two count and Jeff Kepinger strikes out looking. I thought that was going to be a ball, but instead Jeff Kepinger strikes out to get the Orioles out of the inning. Nothing, nobody would get crossed in that inning. But that ball is crushed right there. That may be able to get out of here. And it will not. But uh, Diaz will be right there. And that is a double. A leadoff double from the Orioles. Really nice hit by their lead, by their player. So 2-2 two -two count. Julio Tehran now at 110 pitches. Adam Jones up. That ball is grounded to Connor Gillespie. He kind of airmailed that throw. But Paul Canerco is able to go up and get it. 2-1 count. One out. That ball is hit by Mark Kakis. And he will be out. However, he will advance the runner to third. So this could be exactly what the Orioles have been looking for with two outs. 0-2 count. And Chris Davis just grounds that ball to the catcher. And that will get the White Sox out of the inning. Really nice 
pitch from Julio Tehran. A very good performance from him in general. But two outs right now. And Deaza grounds that ball up the middle. And that is misplayed by J.J. Hardy as Deaza will be able to reach. So Adam Eaton up 2-2 count. Two outs. And that ball is hit to Hardy once more. And he is able to make the play this time. So going in the bottom of the ninth. No, nobody, or no one has broken the tie yet at one. So Tehran back out to pitch at 126 pitches, 3-2 count to Nolan, Nolan Reimold. And that ball is crushed to deep center field, but Adam Eaton is able to track that down. So we are going to extra innings, 1-1, and Paul Canerco is hit by the Orioles pitcher. Not something you want to do in a tie game in extra innings, but Jose Abreu strikes out on the circle change. That was nowhere close, but trying to get something going, and he gets a little too aggressive. Double play, and they convert the double play. Obviously, El Garcia grounds into the double play. So going into the bottom of the 10th now, 3-2 count for the Orioles, and Julio Tehran is still pitching as he strikes him out, or actually he walks him, as that is Manny Machado. is now on first base on a 1-2 count for the Orioles and that ball is fly to left field uh, Deaza is there to play it and he throws that ball in as that will hold Machado up at first base so 2-2 two -two count one out man on first for the Orioles and that ball is hit to second base this should be a double play and we get one and we get two so we are going to the 11th inning as the Orioles are not able to bring their runner home but bottom of the 11th now Reliever and Adrian Nito at first base, and he just botches that. I I had him in to pinch run to get a little more speed, and he just botches that, and that may end up costing us the game as they now have a runner on, one out, and that ball is crushed to deep left center field, and he is going back. That is Adam Eaton, and he will be able to get that, and the runner will not be able to advance. So still a man on first, two two count, two outs, and that ball is hit. Jeff Kepinger's right there. He throws it off the, his back foot and is not able to get in time. A very close play. Almost has that and able to get him out. But J.J. Hardy hits that ball up the middle. They're sending Machado home. We're throwing home. And that throw is not in time. The Orioles will win this game on a walk-off hit by Adam Jones. A great play from Adam Jones. Just hitting that ball right up the middle. Adam Eaton not able to make the throw. Orioles, I said earlier, off to a really nice start of the season, and I hope you enjoy it, because I'm out.